The United States is one big reservation, and we are all in it. So says Russell Means, the legendary Oglala Sioux actor, writer, and activist. Our crew traveled to the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation to talk about the collapsing economy, U.S.-sponsored genocide, and why the American Indian has the lowest life expectancy in the Western Hemisphere. Hello, my relatives. What I have to say about myself is that uh, I've been to prison. I've been a thief. I've been a uh, doper, a dope dealer. And I've also gone to college. I'm an accountant and a computer programmer as well as getting my doctorate in philosophy. I've been everywhere in the strata of white society. I've even hung around with multimillionaires when there were no billionaires. I am an Indian, American Indian. I prefer American Indian to anyone born in the Western Hemisphere is a Native American. I'm an Oglala Lakota from the Pine Ridge Sioux Indian Reservation, which is still designated in the Defense Department as uh, prisoner of war camp number 44. You see, Indian people, we don't have any rights, any constitutional protections on the reservation whatsoever. No freedom of speech, no privacy. Wow, you Americans are in the same boat. As far as being an American Indian and a Lakota, I also belong to the Republic of Lakota because a significant portion of my people went, withdrew from the treaties we made with the federal government, the 1851 and the 1868 Sioux treaties uh, and American treaties signed at Fort Laramie, which is now Wyoming but that's in the Republic of Lakota. So when we withdrew from the treaties because of gross violations, according to the laws that the United States of America is signatory to, and we have a strategy for attaining our complete independence and a return for our land. I've written an autobiography, Russell Means, Where White Men Fear to Tread is the title. It's a very thick book, 550 pages, but I'm very proud. I've had 17 printings in 16 years. So people are interested in who we are. And it's actually a comprehensive history, based on my family, of our existence in the 20th century and the deprivations we went through and the trials and tribulations. And so if you really want to find out about us, read my book, and then you can go to research any place you want to. But you see, the sad thing in America is that we don't exist in the 20th century. You have to specialize in Indian education of some sort, anthropology, history, and then f go and dig in the archives of wherever in order to find out anything about us in the 20th century. So there you have it. You know, the American people for too long have been an irresponsible free people. And even generation to generation has it become less free. They don't recognize it. They have lost the ability of critical thought. In order to regain c critical thought, all you have to do is read your constitution and then look at the laws that govern you especially from the federal perspective. It's unconscionable to allow your freedoms to be taken away decade after decade after decade, year after year. 
And I'm very proud of this, by the way. My nation, the Lakota, were the first nation to militarily defeat the United States of America on the field of battle. And that resulted in the 1868 Sioux Treaty. Be that as it may, what has happened after they economically forced us into these prisoner war camps by destroying our food supply and our, our, our right of passage in our own land, they confined us to these and then they began practicing and perfecting their colonial tactics. What has happened is now America, because of the irresponsibility of your forebearers and the irresponsibility of yourselves, you are now on a one huge Indian reservation. All policies, all policies were bred and born and birthed on, the, on an Indian reservation and then exported to the world and now comes, comes back on the backs of the American people. You have a near perfect document. In the words of uh, Benjamin Franklin in 1744 to a collection of colonists discussing freedom, he said to them, and I quote, if a nation to the north can form a near perfect union that has endured for centuries, why cannot we form a more perfect union Unquote. So they're talking about the Iroquois Confederacy and that's where the Constitution comes from because in 1988 on the eve of the 200 year anniversary of uh, the Constitution it was a unanimous thank you by the Congress of the United States they sent in writing to the Six Nations Iroquois Confederacy thanking them for the input into the Constitution and the formation of the United States of America. So you see the Constitution is Indian law and that's why I love it. You know, beginning in the 1840s, they start stripping away your freedoms by developing the corporation. You know, a piece of paper, a piece of paper. And then in, in the 1870s, of course, during Lincoln, when they declared martial law, and even after they, they ceased civil war, martial law continued on for another three or four years, when it was no need to. And you go on and on, but in the 1870s, that's when Congress started giving the banks the right to rule. And of course, you go on to 1913, and the beginning of the 20th century, that's when they, they officially gave away the power of our economy to the banks, you know? They can print the money for us. According to our Constitution, you should never allow, the people should never allow their money to be printed by someone else. Hello? So the, the history of the Indian and the history of the American have now come full circle and were intertwined in the dictatorial policies of those that control the monetary system of America. And they've, they have done such a bad job of it that they're destroying themselves. <laughs> it's ludicrous at best. Your... Uh, your leaders have forgotten all about you, so welcome to the reservation. With the reason we've become just so materially uh, minded is because Americans don't have a culture. They left their cultures behind. And you see, culture is about values. Anyone says any different is a Democrat or a Republican. At any rate, culture, I find, is the necessary backbone for value. And if you have value, you have culture. 
And it's been proven from empire to empire that when you allow your human right, your individual rights to be usurped, that's when empire grows and, and could care less. I, I, I was growing up when this country, they started emptying this country. Around the 50s, the unions had become so powerful, they were about to form their own political party. They had shown during World War II how powerful they were in the vote for the presidency and the Congress. But they sat down with the bankers <clears throat> and the government around 1950, give or take a year, and they made a deal. The leaders of the unions made a deal with the leaders of America and so sold out the unions. So when the people began to organize and gather and really have some power, it was negated. And it's been negated ever since. Every since. You know, you have no privacy. None. You have no protections anymore. Now, I could, I could be a smart aleck and say, how does it feel? Because I know how it feels living on a reservation. A prisoner of war camp. Now, I can be an American take my social security card and leave the reservation and be like the rest of you. you know, they, they welcomed that because in America they had forced relocation for Indian people back in the 50s. It was fostered under Truman, the relocation plan. And the man appointed to run that, the first man, he was the one who headed up the Japanese internment relocation program during World War II. So he went and headed up the relocation office for the American Indians, and we were, I know, I went on relocation twice. That's kind of a con job, but I, know, I made it out twice. And that's what they want to do, a diaspora, and therefore, guess whose land they're after? In our meager holdings on trust land, over 40% of the natural resource wealth of America is still under and on our lands. 40%. It's curious to me that wherever they put us was full of energy from our grandmother of the earth. That's a thought you should think about. So consequently, you know, if we had the right or the rights that you have you had we would be richer than the Saudis if we had the right to join in a capitalist society and we damn sure wouldn't have allowed Wall Street to use our money for derivatives etc etc you know and enough isn't enough and they start creating financial mythology and you allow it. That's the crime. You have no one to blame but yourself. Look in the mirror. If you can't move and protect yourselves, then guess what happens? Look around you. Look at Detroit. Etc. Etc. It's unconscionable what's happening to America. Now, <clears throat> because of the Federal Reserve and the fact that our money is now worthless, this economy in the United States is going to continue to deflate because you have nothing to back it up. You've exported everything that makes a country run. You've allowed that to happen for greed, for your Walmarts, you know, for your Neiman Marcuses for this, this, this idiocy of just buy, 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 and debt, debt, debt. Because you've allowed your republic to be commandeered by two political parties. 
whose only differences are their, their spending goals. You know, some would rather have them spend over here and than over there. But they still want to spend. And it's a government. There hasn't literally been been literally no difference in those two parties for quite some time since I would say the Civil War. All one has to do is look at the results of history. And that's proof of the pudding. You know? It's uh it's very blatant, and that's another reason I, I fault the American people for not being alert to their own freedoms and to value those freedoms. Instead, it's replaced by politics, which guides you into this economics, this insane economics of a single party with two names. You know, there are many efforts at third parties in this country. But the two dominant, I know, I've testified before state legislatures on behalf of third party politics. And the idiocy of Americans to tell me that if you vote for a third party, you're wasting your vote. What? Control. Patriarchal societies are after control. They want to control everything. Because you see, when you're at the, at the top of a pyramid, whether you're a CEO, a president, or a king, or whatever, when you're on top of that pyramid, it's precarious up there because people are climbing up that pyramid. They want to take your place, and you know that. So the man at the top is fearful. That's why they have armies. That's why they have police. They're fearful. The centralized America. Let's look at that. Centralized America is like a human body. You have veins going out all over to your extremities. And your extremities function very well. And then disease sets in. And all of a sudden, the blood is not being fed to all these extremities. And the right and the proper nourishment to keep your body free is, is co-opted because, number one, you don't eat right, you don't exercise right, and you don't have a, a feeling of well-being because the psychological is very important. So your body begins to die prematurely. Well, that's the same thing with, with life. Life is organic. And in order for it to be organic, everything has to flow freely. If you over-centralize anything, look at a forest, for example. That is centralized. But what's the first thing you smell when you go into a forest? Decay. Because there's so many trees that are strong and they're up there reaching for the energy of the sun. And then there's the other trees that came later and they're weak and they're searching for the sun, but they're crippled because they can't reach it because of the big trees. And so the forest begins to die. Or you, you look at everything and anything around you and you'll see that Anything that is centralized is wrong. What really blows my mind is you go to school and you learn history, but it means nothing to you because you don't do anything to change it. Another empire rears its ugly head and does the same thing that every other empire has done. They overreach, become greedy, and they become too large for themselves and they can't maintain. Because what happens when you become an empire is you've got to maintain a military. That's the only industry left in America. That's proof positive. Look at the budget of the Defense Department. How do you allow that? 
We weren't like that when I was born. I was born in 1939. We weren't the world power. There was another empire called Britain. And allegedly, the rise of communism was another empire. Both of those empires are gone. Just like the Romans. Just like the Egyptians. The Ming Dynasty. Kublai Khan. On and on and on throughout history. The same mistakes over and over and over again. When I was growing up, it was a more libertarian society. On its way to extinction, but still it was libertarian. Children were safe. We could go to the playground without adult supervision. Because we were safe as children. We didn't have to get permission from the school board and get a, a play date with adult supervision. Now children cannot grow up, except in very rural America, without adult supervision. So if you're going to go local, you have to start with your family. What, you know, I have a friend who has a son. I have a son the same age. I was visiting in California, and they wanted to go to ride the Ferris wheel at Santa Monica uh, Wharf, and it was just a little ways away, about a half a mile. And I said, go ahead, son. And my, my friend had almost had a fit because his son was going to go alone with my son to go to a wharf. That's, that's fear. A society of fear. Think about it. A society that's upside down. Banning smoking in public places in a city. Yet they allow the cars to drive back and forth. <laughs> what kind of logic is that? It's insane to live in America now. And America is emptying out. I have friends, and I have friends of friends, who are upper middle class, and they're moving to Central America. A lot of them have moved. Some have moved to New Zealand, some have moved to Australia. But most of that I know have gone down to uh, Costa Rica and Panama. They see the handwriting on the wall for America. And it isn't good because to wrest control of the monetary system from the Federal Reserve will take, I'm sorry to say, a revolution. And America has been through it before a couple times. So, you know, and, th and three times, actually, if you, if you count the union movement, because they revolutionized the people. And whether you like unions or not, there was a time in America when the people, through unions, made their political mark on the ways of America. For instance, the union movement was responsible for the GI Bill the greatest affirmative action program uh, for white people in the history of America. It's information deprivation. That's what they, they're giving us, you know, with the federal school system, no child left behind, and all of that, the dumbing down of America. You know, that's Indian policy. That was born on a reservation in the boarding schools, man. How you dumb down a people in your mode of education. See, I'll give you an example of America as I was growing up. Again, more, more values here. You know, with local control, you have more honesty. That's, it, that, that's just a rule. Think about it. Local control engenders honesty. When I was growing up, I went through a school system in Northern California. And all of California's public education was considered the finest education in America. And this is in the 1940s and the early 50s. America was considered number one in education in the world. So I am the benefit, I have the benefit of coming from the best public school education system in the world. 
That's pretty good. Now, the United States of America is ranked 23rd. I know it's worse than, than it's ever been. It's right in the world, you're ranked. And California is ranked 43rd in the nation in public education. Wow, what happened? What happened is you got saddled with Indian education. That's, what they, that's how they educated us. They dumbed you down. They're dumbing you down. You know? So there's no value in, in education anymore. It's, it's Indian education. And that's why I call America the largest Indian, the largest reservation in the world. 24% of America, of people who are able to work, are unemployed. That's 24%. And that's being kind with that statistic. That's being kind. I grew up in America when all of us, when there was no homeless. There were hobos. There were bums. I know I used to be a bum on Skid Row. But there were no homeless. And all of a sudden we got a homeless. And it's mostly white people. Uh oh, that was your first wake-up call. Wait a minute, the homeless are almost all white. It was an issue. Homelessness was an issue. The value of America that I grew up there, they had values for a while because everything was local. The grocers, the small town the grocers, they had to go to the uh, truck, where the truck farms trucked in there, their, their groceries. You ate seasonal food. You bought fresh bread every day. Even the corporations would get, take back their bread and you went to their special place downtown where it had day-old bread. Day-old bread. Now there's so many preservatives in the bread, it stays on the shelves of Walmart until it rots or until it's bought. The point is, Local control of economics is the only way the human being can live adequately because, it, as I said, it engenders honesty. It engenders communication, which brings about honesty. <clears throat> and that's the kind of America I grew up in. It wasn't completely fair, you know, but it was a hell of a, a lot more happier for me at any rate. I wouldn't change a thing in my life. Especially my childhood was invaluable to who I am today. And I, it, it, it just saddens me to see America being despoiled by the ruling elite. Understand the patriarchal model of the pyramid and you'll understand that as long as that pyramid exists, you're going to end up in the America you have now and it's only going to get worse. That you, along with your parents, your grandparents and their parents, sold our rights down the river, man. We have a duty and you better get real. My duty is to my own people, my local area. And that's why I have the Republic of Lakota. Because I tried to force the United States of America to live up to its own laws. And I couldn't do it. And the American Indian Movement couldn't do it. And all we wanted, we are constitutionalists. It's not a hopeful time unless you grab a hold of the Constitution. It's not too late. It is not too late. Well, you know, because of what the United States did with Indian people, America then became the role model, subsequently, for Hitler's treatment of gypsies and Jews and, and uh, Poles and gays and homosexuals. And then 
South Africa adopted the reservation system and apartheid um, because of the example of the United States. This is all written history because Hitler wrote about it when he was still in uh, Austria. So uh, that the United States of America knows how to treat the lesser human being. I forget how he put it, but the human beings that do not deserve equitable treatment. So <clears throat> unfortunately for the other peoples that suffer, um, America was the role model for concentration camps. Americans have become so greedy, as we know, that they're trying to, first of all, they print money without any value. And they continue on this hocus-pocus search for, for wealth that's, that's based on, on, on air. And one of the ways they do it is, as we know, they use Social Security and your number to, to finance their debt way into the future. So that's why it's mandated that every person born in the United States of America has to have a Social Security number, you know, even before their name is registered. So because they're going to be indebted for the future debt that this society has incurred. The United States and its various agencies, um, the governments even, are using people to raise money and trade. As we know from the Social Security system that everyone born and has to have a social security number or you can't get anything. In fact, your parents can even go to jail if they don't get you a social security number. Now with Indians, not only do we have a social security number for that area of indebtedness, but <clears throat> our reservation and all its value, including the people on it, not only are we indebted on the social security number bit, but we're also future the state attorney general of the state of South Dakota and all the other states that have Indian reservations, they trade that reservation and the value of that reservation and the value of its people, the value of its air, the value of its carbon emissions are traded on Wall Street and Dun and Brad, through Dun and Bradstreet. It's listed. This value is put into financial instruments that are packaged and repackaged, just like the real estate fiasco. So we haven't even hit on all the swindles that Wall Street is visiting upon the people of America. You're nothing but a bunch of coupons for the United States government and the people who run it. That's it. American people, you're a commodity and you don't deserve anything else. And they're going to make sure you continue to be a commodity as long as the empire exists. As long as you allow the Constitution to be raped. This uh, this land now filled with Indians that are absolutely dependent on the government for everything, for everything. At any rate, you depend on the government. And what you'll end up with is poverty and a lot of paper. Because everything you do, the government requires a lot of paper. You have to fill out a lot of forms. Then they have to fill out a lot of forms. 
And then they go up to the next level of government. They got to fill out a lot of forms. And by the time it gets to where it's supposed to go, nothing happens. We have government health here. Our life expectancy, if you, if you don't count AIDS, is the lowest in the world. Here. We are worse off than people in Haiti. Not only physically, but of the heart, our spirit, our reason to live. No, you don't want the government taking care of you. I do not speak untruths. Our land held in trust by the federal government, so we can't get loans, so we can't get businesses. That's some more paperwork you have to apply for. Our casino? The money goes first to the Bureau of Indian Affairs, then we have to write proposals to utilize the money. It's a never-ending cycle of poverty, dependency on the government. And in order for you to get ahead, you have to be like a congressman. You have to take bribes. You have to steal money, taxpayers' money. So America is no different than this Indian reservation. You're dependent on the government now, and you're getting what you deserve. But every time you try to get away from the government, they'll kill you. Or put you in prison. Or let you become an American. <laughs> If you catch my drift, because you're the new Indian. You're the new American Indian. Congratulations. Welcome to the club. But this land is beautiful. It belongs to us. And we should learn to take care of it by fighting for her. She's worth it, and so are we. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Mm -hmm.